On April 15, 1952, 70 years ago this year, an all-jet-powered bomber roared into the skies on a column of black smoke. It was nothing like what preceded it, and nothing has become more of an icon of American military power since. The B-52 also known by its crews as the Buff, is an all-jet powered bomber aircraft that has served in numerous wars since the 1960s and, at one time, was America's primary nuclear deterrent against the Soviet Union. This model is based on a B-52D Stratofortress that would have served during the Vietnam War. The B-52 has a wingspan of 185 feet which translates to almost 5 feet on my model. The B-52 uses an estimated 15,000 LEGO pieces and took 3 months to build. The model is entirely freestanding without the need for any external supports. The B-52D was painted with camouflage on top and black on the bottom for nighttime operations. The B-52 is powered by 8 Pratt & Whitney J57 turbojet engines mounted on pods below the wing. The B-52 has large Fowler flaps that can extend out from the wing. These flaps help to greatly increase lift and can reduce landing speeds. This model also has functioning flapperons. With the onset of American involvement in the Vietnam War in the 1960s, the B-52 was transitioned from a nuclear strike aircraft to a conventional bomber. The Stratofortress was refitted with big belly modifications, which allowed them to carry enormous amounts of conventional explosives. My model is depicted with 500 pound bombs mounted on pylons for carpet bombing missions. The B-52D had large fuel tanks mounted at the tips of the wings which allowed for sorties deep into North Vietnam. This particular B-52 is painted in the City of Fort Worth livery and is tail number 50677. The City of Fort Worth B-52 was the first B-52 to be stationed at Carswell Air Force Base in February of 1958. The nose of the B-52 is covered in sensors. The inlets on both sides are cooling vents for the electronic countermeasure equipment. On the underside of the model, there's a crew entry hatch that can be opened and closed. This model has functioning ejection seats. The pilot, co-pilot, and electronic warfare operator would be situated on the upper deck and had upward firing ejection seats. The navigator and the radar navigator would be stationed below deck and had downward firing ejection seats. These proved to be rather dangerous in situations where the crew tried to eject at low altitudes. The sixth crew member would be situated in a very cozy compartment of his own, but we'll get to that later. I've removed a section of the roof that now reveals the cramped crew compartment of the B-52. The pilot and co-pilot sit next to each other, surrounded by analog dials and switches. A little bit further back is a comically small toilet for the crew to relieve themselves. Behind that is the ladder that leads to the lower deck and the crew entry hatch. The electronic warfare officer sits alone and monitors for incoming fighters or missiles that he might have to try to jam. The last crew member sits all the way back in the tail gunner position. The tail gunner would sit in a pressurized compartment where he would operate his radar guided quad 50 caliber machine guns. Once you flip the B-52 over, all of the most interesting parts, including the landing gear and bomb bay, become visible. At the very front, we have the crew entry hatch as well as the two downward firing ejection seats. As we move our way back, the unusual landing gear configuration of the B-52 becomes visible. 
Due to the incredibly thin and flexible wing, the Boeing engineers were forced to be a little bit more creative with where they placed the landing gear. The solution that they came up with was to mount the undercarriage in a bicycle configuration with the wheels folding forward and back. The mechanism is quirky, but works correctly on my model. To prevent the flexible wing from striking the ground, the B-52 has outrigger wheels which can also fully retract on the model. In between the forward and aft landing gear is the bomb bay. The business end of the B-52 works just like it would on the real aircraft. In order to facilitate easier ground loading and due to the B-52's low ground clearance, a second set of doors allows the bomb bay to open up even wider. Here is another angle of how the flaps can extend and retract from the bottom of the wing. It works on both sides, of course. The B-52 was used extensively in the Vietnam War in infamous bombing raids such as Operation Arc Light and the controversial Linebacker 2 raids. The B-52 was an effective and devastating bomber that played a major role in the Vietnam War. Later versions of the buff would go on to serve in Operation Desert Storm as well as in Afghanistan. The US Air Force currently plans on operating the B-52 well into the 2040s, which would give the buff an unprecedented 100 year lifetime on frontline military service. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to bringing you more videos like this in the near future. Bye for now.